this video we're going to be talking about the command pattern one of the uh, standard game programming uh, patterns and, and um, structures that uh, it's used a lot in um, game engines game development game programming the command pattern um, works very well with unity and in many instances unity is um, sort of implementing the um, the command pattern in a variety of different things. VRTK uh, relies heavily on the command pattern for some of its um, operation. But let's talk a little bit about what the command pattern is. Now we've got uh, lots of different ways of I push a button, something happens on the computer. I move a joystick, something happens in the game. Um, and it's really simple and straightforward to write a piece of code where I get the input trigger and that gets turned into a code event. If the input manager get key tells me that the key code corresponding to space has been pressed, then player character dot jump, for instance. And there's a direct connection between um, the input event and the block of code that gets called as a result of that. And if you're just messing around and doing some simple pro prototyping, this may be uh, all you need. Uh, the worst case scenario is that you could use the input um, directly as a value. So something like player character dot transform translate um, zero input dot get axis is zero comma zero. Where I'm using the value, the straight up value that's coming off the raw joystick um, as my value to uh, translate whatever my player character is. Um, very tightly coupled. If I want to go back and make a change to this, um, I may not know where this code is or how it's behaving, and I can only use that one axis for this. Um, it really can get kind of messy. Once again, if it's if it's just quick and dirty prototype code, and um, you don't really care too much what happens for it or who sees it or how it's how it's uh, used in the future, it's fine. It's fine. It works. It'll compile. It'll get the job done. So what the command pattern does is it takes the input trigger, right? So um, input dot get key key code dot space, right? Um, and it associates that with a command. A command is an object that contains all the information needed to execute um, any particular function. And the command um, starts as an extension from um, an abstract base class that we'll call command. Uh, and then I have other commands like move forward, move sideways, move backwards, jump, shoot, fire, um, close program, load level, all sorts of different commands um, that are extended from this base command class. Uh, and they all have some method called execute in them. So when the input trigger comes in, it calls the execute method on whichever command it's immediately associated with. So th the command pattern has several benefits associated with it. Um, first of all, it decouples the, the input from the event. And if you can decouple your code and your classes as much as you can, uh, that's going to simplify things down the road because it makes it easier to make a change or work on just one component of it without worrying about how that effect um, affects other classes or other components in your, uh, in your program. If code is tightly coupled together, then I, I, I wind up... It's a recipe for spaghetti code is what it is because you, you wind up weaving new code through this method and through that method and opening up all these different classes. And loosely coupled code is um, just more efficient to maintain. It, it may actually seem um, more difficult to implement. If I, if I just wanted to write something quick and dirty, yeah, I'm not really going to care about how my code is coupled. Um, but if I plan on handing this off to somebody else, or if I have other members of my team, and we all need to be on the same page about how the code is organized and how the structures work together, then decoupling the code as much as possible allows for somebody to step back through it and see what's going on. 
if the card's tightly coupled, it can be really, really hard to uh, reverse engineer. So the command pattern also allows for a sequence of events. Because I don't just have that one line of code that's being executed um, by, the, uh, by the input string, where, you know, input get key, player jump, you know, now I can have um, a sequence of events that, that may or may not know anything about each other, may not be related to each other, but they can all key off of that same input. I can also, because these commands are now objects, I can um, store them in a list. And so that allows me to roll back through my commands. I can see what my previous command was, uh, so I can do stuff like uh, replay a sequence of commands or uh, undo commands. Um, the command pattern allows for a lot of stuff like that. And I can add or change commands without modifying any of my existing code. If I have a, a set of commands and I need a new command, I just create the new command and start working with it. I don't have to go back through any of my uh, existing project and you know, modify any, other, any of my other commands. Um, except in the case where I need to modify my, my base abstract command class. Sometimes that happens. So let's take a look at an actual implementation of uh, the command pattern. I've got this uh, Unity project over here, and it's very simple. I've got a, um, a sphere that is just a sphere, and it actually has nothing on it. And then I have a command handler that has an external reference to my, uh, what I'm calling it, player transform, so, but it's the sphere, right? So I've got my player is my sphere here. And um, when I play the game, as I hit different keys, my player moves in different directions. So I'm using the, the WASD keys to um, move my little player ball around and right now it doesn't do a whole lot more than that. So let's take a look at this command handler script. Then we'll switch over here to Visual Studio. And this is the core of the command pattern right here is this, this handler that sort of handles these commands. So I have my um, I have my uh, serialized uh, or public uh, transform, my player transform, and then I create uh, four different commands, button W, button A, button D, and button S. Right? Uh, and here's where I define what they do. Right here in start. Button W is a new move, move forward object, button A is a new move left object, button S is a new move back object, uh, and so on. Right? And then on my update end is, once again, it's very straightforward. Handle input, um, and then if I hit a W, I do button W dot execute. Don't care what it is. Um, button A is button A execute, button S, button S dot execute, and button D, button D dot execute. Now in my abstract command class, here's my, uh, this is the base class that all of my other commands um, are extended from. I have an abstract void execute method, um, and the abstract uh, tells it that it's incomplete. Right? So it, it doesn't have to have uh, the open and curly brackets, it, um, but uh, the extension classes can um, are expected to finish this execute method. So, and then I have a virtual class or a virtual method uh, called move that doesn't have anything in it. So, my uh, extension classes will also have to uh, supply the logic that goes inside the move here. We'll have to completely supply the execute. And then my different classes for my command objects, um, they all move the ball, so they all look pretty similar. Execute actually calls a method called move. Move um, translates the ball in some, some distance in some direction. Now we see that move distance uh, is not defined anywhere in my command, but it is defined in my command class. So 
in my uh, my base class for command. That is, and then move forward, move left, and move right are all based on the same thing. Um, I'll talk about replay and undo commands here in a little bit. So as the game as the game gets played, the input comes in, the command associated with that key calls the execute method, execute calls move. It seems like it's um like it's just adding an extra step in there, doesn't it? So what what is what is the real purpose of having this object call the move method instead of the input handler just saying, hey, player object, you need to move. Now let's take a look at that undo feature. So I've gone through and I haven't really had to make any change in my Unity project yet. I've done everything in the code. Um, so in our command base class I've had it add I've had it do I've had to add a new virtual method um, that's going to be modified by my other uh, my other classes here in a little bit for called undo and then every one of my other movement commands because that's really all I'm worried about undoing is my movement command right now um, So every one of these movement commands, well, before I get to what the movement commands have to do, let's go over to the command handler, because I've had to add a bunch of stuff to my command handler. First of all, I have an internal list of commands called my command list that starts off empty, but as new commands come in, I add them to that list. And then uh, my update is exactly the same. I've added a new button, button U from my undo command and then down here in my handle input method if uh, the use ever pressed then I'm going to execute whatever the undo command is. I'll go over to the undo command and here's my execute method and what it does is it gets from the handler so now I have to pass in as a parameter the the command handler itself because my commands well, first of all, they're not based on monitor develop, um, so they don't have a lot of the uh, nice features for discovery and dependency that um, you would get from another mono behavior. So the command handler passes in a uh, reference back to itself, and then my undo command looks to see if that uh, handler has a command list that's got any commands in it. If it is, then I call the undo command on the last command. Since all of these commands are of the same base type, I can add them all to the same list and iterate through them and work with them as if they're commands, even though they're, they're all basically different subcommands of the command. So um, that sort of uh, collection and grouping extends down to the, uh, the base class type. And then the last thing it has to do is uh, remove the last command off of the command list in the handler. Already, I'm, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable about this because I'm having to pass in references to the thing that's calling the method on the class um, so that the method that I call can turn right around and invoke a method on the thing that did the calling in the first place. Um, and I'm going to show you a way around that. I just, if you're looking at that and you're going, wow, that looks really sloppy. It's not, I, it works. I don't feel good doing it either, but it works. But I'll show, there'll, there'll, there'll be a reason for it down the road. Um, uh, so, and then in each one of the movement classes that I have. Um, the undo command has the opposite of whatever the move method was. So if um, if I moved forward then I'm gonna move back. And if I moved left then I move right. So it's 
kind of like a mirror image of whatever the original command was. And different types of commands are going to have different ways of handling undo, because it's, it's not just you, you pop it off a stack and there it goes. You have to reverse process whatever the events of that command was. Um, you know, depending on the complexity of the commands and the states that you want to be able to undo and keep track of, um, your actual undo method could be quite complicated, which is one of the benefits of the command pattern itself, is because every one of my commands can have a different undo method, can have a, a, a different way of undoing what it did before. So, when we come over here and we run this, now I can use the WASD keys to move my ball around. Everyone moving in a different direction. And then if I start spamming the U key, then it moves backwards through that list. Until it gets to zero. Right there. So now let's take a look at how um, this replay thing is uh, going to work out. Uh, once again, over here in Unity, I haven't made any changes to my game project at all. These are game programming patterns now. Um, in my base command class, I have acted, added just a regular method called play. Um, and it calls, it's passed in a trans, transform, and then it calls move on that transform. But because it's uh, fully realized in my um, in my base class, I don't have to implement it any any of my other classes. So move forward, move none of the other movement commands. The undo doesn't do it, um, and then the replay command itself is really simple. Um, all I do is I get the handler, and then I call replay on the handler. And there's a reason for why I have to do this. Um, my command handler itself is probably the thing that um, has changed the most in this replay feature. And at this point, it's starting to become just a little bit more than a thing that handles commands. Um, it's more like a command manager now because it's maintaining a list of all the commands and it's doing things with that list of commands. So. I have a button R that I've added for my replay button. Uh, I've added a bool uh, called is replaying and I've set it to false because I don't want to be able to in interpret commands or input um, while the thing is replaying. And then I've added a new replay command object and assigned it to button R. Um, and then in my update method, this is new. If it's not replaying, then I go ahead and handle the input as normally. Um, replay is called by the replay command, and if I'm not replaying, then I want to start a code routine called replay. And the uh, the code routine that I start um, is called replay. And first thing it does is it sets my player transform position back to the origin uh, because that's where the game starts, right? So it sets it back to the origin. This could have been any arbitrary point. Um, I could store the, the player transform at the beginning and then re, reassign it at this point, um, however I wanted to do it. Everything starts at zero in this uh, example anyway, so it's all right. And then I step with a for each loop through each of the commands in the command list. Uh, and then I call play on that command, um, kicking back a yield return null. The reason why I have to have my replay command here call replay on the handler that just called the execute command on the replay command is because this is not a mono behavior. My command handler is a mono behavior. What you get with mono behavior is nice game loops and the update loop and um, things like coroutines that I can start and not have to worry about managing. Because what I want this to do is I want this to play a command every frame. Um, if I just start up another thread, 
uh, that's not synchronized in any way uh, through the uh, to the user interface. As it goes through all the commands, we're not going to see the commands played on the on the screen. It's just going to yes, it will dutifully run through all of the commands over the course of a single frame. If we see anything at all, it'll just blink. So the um, because this is really the only mono behavior involved in this whole thing, um, it's the thing that has to do the replaying of the commands, so that I get one command replayed every frame. Otherwise, I'd have to manage this some other way. Um, yeah, some other way. I still have this really messy situation, but before I talk about that messy situation, let's um, let's see how this plays. So I'm sitting here going crazy, moving my all around. Bring it real close to the camera. I have no idea how many commands I've put in at this point. Probably a few hundred, or 150 or so. It feels like about 150. And now when I hit R. So it did step through and replay through all the commands. And it did a command every frame, just like I told it to. Uh, it replays so much faster than I put it in, though, because I can't put in a command every frame. Um, the best I can do is maybe five, eight, eight times a second. Um, how many was that? It was about five. Let me. But that's about one tenth as fast as I'd have to. So for every ten frames between every time I hit one of these keys, there's ten frames of nothing. But when I replay it, it stretches all those back, condenses all those, it doesn't play through the empty space. So if I wanted to, if I wanted it to play back at the same speed, I could come in here and give myself one more command. And, and I'm going to call this do nothing. And I'll edit this. extend from mono behavior, it extends from command. We don't need either of those. And I need an execute. And my execute will do nothing. There we go. So, oh, let's get rid of that. So, I have a new command here called do nothing. I'm going to come back here into my command handler. I'll add a no button. So I've got my no button as my new do nothing object. And then down here as a funnel else, else. No button. Execute. Well, I'll need I still need to send in the same stuff.
So, uh, no button execute, do nothing, public override. I still need to add this. To the command list, so I'm adding an I'm adding command to the command list uh, that tells it that I didn't do anything. So now every frame a command is going to be executed, whether it's the do-nothing command or not. Um, and let's see if this works. Give it a little bit of delay, we'll do some more. Now, it plays back at the same speed, because even on the frames when no button is being pushed, it is entering those commands. So, for every frame between these button pushes, it still enters a command of do nothing. So now I've got a accurate time-based replay of my game. So where could I go with this? I could do a lot of different stuff with this. Uh, one of the good things about the, the command pattern is it, by decoupling, the, the input event from the logic associated with that input event. I could have other things other than input create those commands or execute those commands. I could have the same movement and the same character control commands being executed by an AI as I can from a joystick and from the perspective of the commands themselves, they don't care. They don't care where the inputs are coming from. It could be triggered by um, something on the GUI or a joystick or a timer or some sort of um, AI or some sort of logic based into the game. And the commands, for their part, really don't care. They get told to execute, and they execute. What we could do to fix this command handler messiness, where I'm passing the command handler in to the, to the commands so that they have a handle to the thing that called them so that they can reach back to the thing that called them and add themselves to the list in the command handler. That's just nuts. That's just nuts. There's got to be an easier way of doing this. Um, and one thing that would be really neat to have in our uh, command handler What would be nice to have, to have, to have? I want to be able to access this class so I'd like to be able to reach my command, command handler from any corner of my project um, and I'd like to make sure that there's only one of them. If I know that there's only going to be one command handler in my project, and any of my code can get there from anywhere in my project, then what I have is a singleton. And that's probably what we're going to talk about next, is... Uh, Singletons.